Hey guys, how's it going? It's again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue and show you what I have made so far for the AR application that I'm creating. I added a component that is going to allow me to select multiple effects and then apply those effects in augmented reality. I'm also going to be adding some other things in the future like motions and also some settings that I want to add to the app. So I'm going to try to make the app as simple as I can but also release it so that you can go through the whole process with me and then also understand what it takes to release an app for iOS and also with AR technology. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, let me show you what I have so far for the app that I'm working on for AR. So far I have the UI set up, I show you how some of these components are. I also show you the, the way that I'm structuring the textures. So if I go into textures and you look at the master sheet, that now has all the different buttons that you see on the UI. So let me wait until it open up and I'll show you. So, so far it's pretty simple. I have the side button, the settings, these are for motions, the effects, and then basically to go back and forward on the effects and also to cancel the the menu and go back to this menu and this is just the panel that you see on the very bottom so it's going to be growing as we more we work on the on the application so right now what i want to show you is some of the things that i that i work on so i have the effects in here and i ended up making this more you know generic and, and just call it an effect and the way that this is a structure let me move this to the left side so you can see what i have is the effect itself is going to be the one that contains the, the raw image. It has a raw image, it has a stream video. This is going to be the stream video that I have under the videos folder. So if I click on it, you look at the video, it's going to be, for instance, I want to play this video when somebody is selecting the first effect. And if I select the right button, I'm going to go into the portal pink and then so on. I'm going to have many, many effects. But for now, I just have those two. So if I go back to here, this has a raw image, a stream video, and then also a UI effect because I needed to display to the user what effect they have selected. So in this case, I'm just calling this one effect one, but I could call this anything, you know, anything I want. It's pretty much like, you know, when you select your effects in Instagram, they have different, different names. So that's what I have this no name for. And then each one of these are, is incrementing as I, you know, as I toggle them. So if I go to the right, I'm going to be enabling the next one. The previous one is going to be disabled. I'm going to go to the next one, next one, next one. And then as soon as I reach this one, this button is going to go away. And then I'm going to now allow, I'll also allow people to go back. Also, if I'm on the first video, then on the first selection, then this button really doesn't need to be shown. So that's some of the logic that I added. And I'll show you some of that logic so that you're familiar with that. So the other things that I, I also needed to do is, let's say that I, I want to select this. And in the past, I would what I would do is I would have a script that had an on-click event on this, and this was a button. And, and then I could capture, OK, when that is selected, then you know I, I, I apply a specific action. So what I ended up doing on this, in this version, and this is something that I learned by working in as a Unity developer in another job, is that you can also add an event trigger. So if you add an event trigger and you add, you you can also just click here and then they have different options. So if you want to do point, pointer enter, pointer exit, I wanted to capture the pointer click. So that's going to be when somebody actually touches that, basically that effect. As soon as they touch that effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this panel. So the cool thing with this is that I can, I can just drag and drop, you know, for instance, in this case, I'm going to drag and drop this panel. And then in the in that panel, I have a UI pane. And then I know that UI pane has a high me method. So I'm basically hiding that panel as soon as somebody clicks on it. And then the other thing that I'm saying is, OK, now that I have hidden, I have this panel hidden, I'm going to enable and show this. Because on this button, I have another action that happens as soon as they, somebody clicks on it. So when somebody clicks on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the menu, which is going to be this. But I'm also hiding, I'm basically hiding this button. And the way that I'm hiding this button is I have implemented a UI pane. And then the UI pane has an on show option. And as soon as this shows up after the, you know, the fading time, then I'm going to hide this. And then basically it's a toggle to go back and forth 
between seeing the panel and then going back to the main menu. So apart from, from all, all of these options where you can actually select them, let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they work, and then we can look at the code. So if I hit play, you can see that it's going to show, it's going to show the menu. I still have some things to do because uh, this is by default, it's going to show this. And I might want to show a little wizard in the beginning so that people know exactly how to use the app. And I might not need it. I'm not sure right now, but so far this is how it works is you can start, you know, detecting planes by moving your phone around. So they're going to click, you know, you're going to click on the menu. You're going to see the, the current effect and you can see that this button right here, it's enabled. And then also the left button is not shown. And the way that it works is I can, you know, I can press the next one. Now I'm seeing the next effect. You can see that these effects is no longer valid. If I go back and select the previous one, you can see that that goes away. So I can go to the next one, next one, next one, next one, until I hit the, until I hit the max. And then now the right button is not enabled. And now actually it's not, it's not active. So meaning that it doesn't, it's not visible. Then I can go back and so I can cycle through them and then you know, select the select the effects. So the other thing I want to show you is, let's say that I wanted to select, for instance, I wanted to select this, and some of the things that I could do to capture that event because I haven't implemented it, I haven't implemented that, but I have the pointer click here, and as soon as I click on it, this is what's going to happen: is the menu is going to go away, and also the the menu option right here, it's going to show. You can see that now it's invisible. So let's say that I wanted to, to show some messaging. So I'm going to go to the console. And, and this is because I don't have the code yet for selecting you know, that VFX and then applying that EFX to AR. But let's say that I wanted to test it without having that code. I can, because this is a runtime execution. So it's really cool because I can just add a new node. And I know that in the user interface, I have a debug, I have a debug.log. And in fact, I can go here, and I think it's in the UI manager. Yeah, I have a I have a log method for testing, and this is gonna be you know applying. I can just say applying effect, and then as soon as I click on it, you're gonna see that that actually got executed. The menu disappeared, and also my main my main menu toggler is now showing. So I can go back through. And we can go to another effect. I can select it, and then you can see that actually the the next one didn't show uh, an event executed because I only have that on the first one. So you can look at the next one; it doesn't have it yet, and that's because I haven't really worked out all of these ones. But if I go back here, and we say that I'm going to, it looks like I have an issue because I selected the second one, and the second one doesn't have the options to show the menu the menu icon. So let me go back through and show you that again. So I can go ahead and, so right now they don't have the, you know, they don't have the debug.log. So I can go here and select the user interface, drag it and drop it, go into my UI manager, log and say, hello world. I can just select it. And then this is just, you know, mocking up that I'm going to be able to select it and then assign that. So a couple of things that I, that I wanted to keep in mind while was I'm developing this is this is going to be toggling. So as soon as I press this, it's going to be showing. So the first the first mode is that we're going to be showing it like this, right? So this is going to show like this when you first open the app. As soon as you press the effects button, it's going to bring it up to to basically to that mode. So it's going to slide up. And as soon as it's light up, this one is going to be active. I'm going to be disabling these other buttons. And actually, I'm going to be I'm going to be disabling this one if this one is selected and then enable this other one. So as soon as you click on the other one or touch the other one, it's going to disable the one that is on that way in that way the user knows that that's the one that is active. But I also need to use the left and right button for these components. So I'm going to use it in this component. These are going to be different motions that you can select. And then I might use it for settings or I might just make these two disappear. But the, the fact is that I wanted to make whatever I was making with the effects and I was going to reuse for the motion. So what I ended up doing on the effects, I have something called a UI selector and I wanted to keep it generic because I'm going to be reusing it. I might have more options later on. So the way that this works is this is going to be handling the left and right. 
it's called the UI selector, and then the components that are inside, the, it doesn't matter what they are, they just need to inherit from UI node. So right now, if you look at this component, it has a UI effect. If I double click on the UI effect, it's actually inheriting from UI node. And UI node is, is a very simple POCO, and this POCO just has a no name, and then just a public property that returns a node. The reason why I needed to do this is because I, I wanted to keep it generic. This might be a UI effect, but for the other one, I'm gonna have a UI motion, and that UI motion is gonna have different behavior than the UI effect, because the UI effect is for videos, the UI motion is gonna be for motions that I apply to the visual effects. But I wanted to inherit from UI node, because they're gonna have these common properties that are gonna be no name for now, but I also needed to know I also needed to grab all the different components that are inside of the effects. And let's say if later on I do motion, let's say that I clone this, this is gonna be motions. This one is gonna be motion, 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 and then they're all gonna be inheriting from, from the same UI node, and then the code is not gonna change because I'm also gonna have a UI selector on this one. So it'll make more sense as soon as I get to, to that. For now, know that UI selector it's one of the things that it's doing, it has, let me just walk you through this so you understand it. So I have an array of selectable objects, and right now this is just private. You can see that it doesn't, it's not exposed through the inspector. I also have, this is gonna be a generic component, so I have a next button and also a previous button. Also it's gonna be very generic because I'm gonna know, I'm gonna tell the user what they have selected, so this is gonna work for effects and also is gonna work for motions. And then I have a selected index to determine, you know, what is the current item that is selected out of the list. So on the awake method, I just call the initialize. And this is why I'm inheriting from UI node because I needed to, I wanna keep it generic. I wanted this to work for UI motion and also for UI effect. So I'm just doing a, basically a Lambda here that says, give me all the components in the, in the children nodes that are, it doesn't matter if they're active or not, this is gonna also retrieve the inactive because I'm passing in a true. And then I'm saying, make sure that you don't include the current component, the UI selector transform, and then convert that to our array. So I'm just storing everything that I can select in here. So if I had UI motions, this, like I said, this would work for that as well. So the next thing that I do is I set the, you know, the first index to active. So the first one out of the list is gonna be effect one, so that's gonna be the one that is active. I also set the name so that we can see the name. And then the next thing that I do is I also check, okay, if we only have one item in the list, there's no reason for me to show the next button, so I'm basically hiding that. And then I'm also making sure that the previous button is disabled by default because if, you're, if it's the first item on the list, there's really no reason for you to go back. I also have a next and also a previous. So on the next one, just incrementing the selected index, then I'm making sure that if I hit the max, then the next button doesn't show, but the, the otherwise, if, I'm, if I haven't reached the max, that means that I have, another, I have another item to go to, another effect, so I'm gonna still show the next button. This one is for the previous button, if we're, you know, if, if we're great, greater than selected index than zero, then I'm gonna make sure that I enable the previous button. This is just to make sure that I'm also disabling the previous app, the previous item every time, so I'm hiding that. Otherwise, it's gonna show multiple effects at once. So I'm basically saying, okay, if I'm going to the next item, I'm going to go back to the previous item, deactivate that one, and then activate the next one. And then I just basically show you the name. So I do something similar with the previous one. I just decrement the selected index. I also make sure that if we're at the uh, index zero, if we're starting, there's no previous button, but there is an X, you know, an X button. And then I'm basically, you know, incrementing the incrementing, looking at the at the next item, setting it to false, because in this in these iterations we're going to the previous item. And then I'm also, you know, making sure that I activate the previous item. And then I'm just showing you the node. This is pretty simple. I'm just getting the UI node and then setting the UI selected index based on the name that I set on the node. So that's how this works. I'm, I'm hoping to use that on, on motions, like I said. And then, so for, for now, that's all I have, guys. If you guys have any questions on anything that I mentioned, let me know. So for the next video, what I'm gonna be doing is now that I have this component implemented, I want to go ahead and add the additional effects. 
I'm going to have at least 10 to, you know, to, to be able to test this. And then once I have those 10, I'm going to be looking at motions and then we're going to be looking at settings. And then, you know, if that is enough for the app to get released, then I might release it that way. But there's a lot to do still. And I hope you enjoy this video. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing in my office, behind the scenes, and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.